Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the basic units of sound, which are called syllables. Syllables are basic units of sound that have a vowel sound inside. So it's important to remember, even though you see the letter of the vowel, that does not necessarily mean you always will hear it. We're also going to be talking about vanishing syllables in honor of Halloween because uh, of like spooky ghosts and costumes. Vanishing means disappearing. So sometimes Americans will take out a syllable to shorten a word. We will also be covering voice and unvoiced consonants because this is very important, especially for uh, the simple present with verbs that end in S and the simple past and verbs that end in ED. So we'll be covering those two later, as well as another unit on stressed rules for uh, verbs and nouns and adjectives. Lastly, we're going to be talking about some unusual words that change in the S and Z ending depending on how it's used, either as an adjective or as a verb. Okay. So what is a syllable? Again, it is a unit of sound that includes a vowel. Not what you see, but what you hear. So for example, in my name, Caroline, it has three syllables. One way you can count the number of syllables in a word is by looking at the person's chin. Every time it moves up and down is one syllable count. So Caroline, right? Um, I also would like to show you some examples. We will get into the rules about stresses later, but I want to show you some tips that might help you. So as I mentioned, we need to make sure that each syllable has um, a specific sound attached to it. So for example, hat is only, hat is only one syllable count, right? That's what I hear. Now look at this though. Hat, hate. By adding this E, I still only have one syllable count. However, the pronunciation of the vowel changes. I go from A to A, right? This is a long form of the verb, or the vowel, I'm sorry. Whereas A is a short form of the A vowel, right? So we're going to have a separate lesson on this, but I want you to preview it. Anytime you have a consonant vowel consonant with an E attached at the end, this E will not be pronounced, it'll be a silent E. Instead, you will extend the letter or the sound of this vowel. So in this case, we know our five vowels are A, E, I, O, and U, right? The easy thing about long vowel sounds are that they sound exactly like the letter. So for example, I, is the long sound of the vowel I. I, lime, right? Or O, hope. Or A, cape. Or E, peat. Or U, june, right? But if I say, for example, I get rid of this E, my O vowel sound will now be shortened. So it goes from hope, O, hope to an ah sound, ah, ha, or in this case, k, a, k, a, cap, or p, e, peat, to a, pet. There are more rules that I'd like to share with you, but we'll save that for another video. I also want to show you here, so sometimes, as I emphasize, it's what you hear. Even though these two vowel sounds are next to each other, you only will pronounce one. More often than not, if you see two vowels together, not always, because rules and pronunciation can always be broken. I know that's very frustrating, but it's just the way it is. So, sometimes when you see two vowels next to each other, you will only pronounce the first one. In this case, it's E, and it's a long vowel sound, peak. Now I'm gonna show you briefly two other sets of general guidelines to help you with your pronunciation. And then I'm going to show you what happens when we take out some of those syllables to shorten words. 
So to help guide you, I've created two other rules I would like to introduce you to. Now remember, these rules, they're all, there will always be exceptions in breaking them, but they will help kind of give you a loose guideline in terms of how to pronounce the words when you come across them. So words that end in a C or G followed by an E is, in these examples in blue, the E is actually silent just like the examples I've shown you earlier. Now, if it ends in a C and followed by an E, it kind of takes on this S sound. Like, so for example, dance, face, ice, sauce. Like, think of applesauce. All of these have an S sound. Whereas the words that end in G have a J sound. We don't pronounce this E. So, college, fridge, age, orange, right? We don't say these E's actually at all. Now, this is different than what I'm going to explain here. We have a lot of words that end in L-E. It's strange because the pronunciation should be L, but for some reason in English, we switch the letters and write L-E. So let me explain. Here, in bottle, it actually sounds more like this ending here. But in this case, we do pronounce the E. We need that vowel sound. Bottle, or table, or comfortable, or couple, or middle, or even your favorite, Google, right? I hope these help you. And what we're going to take a look at next to help you sound more like a native speaker are reduced words. In other words, called vanishing syllables. I'm only going to introduce you uh, a few and later on I will give you more. So gradually each video I will introduce you to more and we'll have conversation activities to get you more accustomed and used to it. Okay, so what I have behind me are vanishing syllables. Now as my, my scared little emoji said, ah, oh, where, where did it go, right? The sound has disappeared. So here I've kind of created a category of words that have three syllables, right? So every, or different, or favorite, restaurant, business, memory, average, chocolate, cam camera, right? It sounds strange for me to pronounce all three syllables as a native English speaker because in reality, when you go outside of the classroom, you'll hear people take out this second syllable. So, for example, right now, I am using my camera to film. I omit, I get rid of this second syllable. Camera. Or chocolate. Or average. Average, I can combine these two. Or here, every, every, different, different. You look different today. Or what is your favorite ice cream? Or what's your, what's a good restaurant to eat at? Or is the business successful? Or I have lots of good memories, or I had a good memory of my childhood. In, this, in these three above here, I start them because they're a little unusual. For example, this word actually has four syllables. Sometimes it can get reduced to three, actually. Sometimes it can get reduced to two, actually. So. In my personal opinion, I say, actually. Actually, you are right and I am wrong. Or in this case, interesting, right? Four syllables. We actually will take out the second syllable, interesting. The second vowel, interesting. Or here, evening, evening. We actually kind of separate the two here, evening. I hope you have a wonderful evening tonight. 
So I hope by introducing you to some of these words, they are quite common and familiar, but sometimes you may realize that people reduce them. And for that reason, I wanted to create a separate lesson in teaching you these really quick. Now what we're going to do is move on to voice and unvoiced consonant. Okay, so there's two categories of consonants. We will be focusing more on vowel sounds later, but first the foundational basics. I need to introduce you to two types of consonant sounds. One I have is the voiced, which means in your throat, when you say them, you feel a vibration. You can feel it moving very strongly. The unvoiced consonants, you may be able to feel them just a little bit, but it's a weaker uh, sensation, weaker feeling. So let me give you a handful to look at. For example, voice is the d, d sound, or the b sound, or g, b, z, j, or the voice d, father. Now, from this perspective, from the side, view perspective, the TH sound is something that's very difficult for a lot of people, okay? So from this side perspective, if I were to look at the mouth from here, and if these were my teeth, my beautiful big teeth, then if I make the voiced sound, then it's kind of like I bite down on my tongue, father, father. This is the voice sound. The voiceless sound with the TH, if I have my teeth here, then what happens is I need to make sure that air can push through here. Father, father. You should be able to feel air being pushed if you put your mouth, your hand in front of your mouth. So father, birthday. Father, the, the. It's a strong push, but not a, not like a lot of air being pushed out slowly. Now, birthday, birthday, right? The, the voice consonants, so I gave you some of them. These are some words, right? Like dad, lab, pig, save, buzz, joke, father, mother, brother, right? The unvoiced are consonants that you can feel, but it's just very slightly. So like... These two are similar, the S sounds. Right? So fat, stop, dance, safe. Right? Look at this consonant, vowel, consonant with that silent E, right? Safe, A, safe, kiss, watch, push, birth. Now, if you have any questions, please ask me. We will review these in class, but it's very important to help you tie your pronunciation with grammar, okay? So, in the very last bit of this video, I'm going to introduce you to some unusual or strange words that change in the S or the Z sound depending on how it's used in the context, whether it's used as a verb or an adjective. So to conclude our video, I want to talk about unusual words, common words you, you will see in English that have different pronunciations depending on if you use it in the context of a verb or an adjective. So words that have an S ending, that end in a, an S, have a Z sound if it's a verb. So for example, I say, hey, can you close the door? It's too cold out. It's too cold outside. There's too much wind. Close the door. If I use it as an adjective, maybe I'm standing at a bus station and someone is right here. Ah, oh, someone is standing too close to me. It has an S sound. They're standing too close to me, so I ask them to give me space, right? Or um, use use so for example you need to use your mouth and tongue and teeth and everything for this pronunciation class right use this whiteboard has many uses 
right? There's many advantages, many ways I can use this whiteboard when teaching my students. Or abuse. Some people that have drug addiction abuse substances, abuse drugs, right? An adjective for this is called drug abuse, right? They suffer from drug abuse. The last one is excuse. So sometimes if you're in a crowded room, you say, oh, excuse me, right? Or if you need to leave from the dinner table early, you say, oh, please excuse me, I need to go. Excuse. Now, excuse, for example, if you don't do your homework and I ask you why, then you will give me an excuse a reason why you did not do something, or a reason why you were late to work, right? Now I hope this video has helped you, and if there's anything else that you would like to learn, please don't hesitate to ask me. I will be creating a video at least once every week to introduce a new concept that we will also cover in class, but as always, this is your classroom and I want to help you learn in the best way possible. So reach out to me if there's anything else you would like me to cover. Okay, I will see you soon. Bye.